Using the board account method, the way that an election is decided is in terms of ranks on ballots, where what you do follows essentially a three-step process that starts by scoring each of the ballots, where a last place vote gets one point, next to last gets two points, third from last gets three points, and so on down the line until you make your way all the way up to whichever one came in first that gets the most points, where that would be, I suppose, something like N if you have N options. And then the points are totaled for each separate candidate. Then the candidate with the most points, for hopefully clear reasons, would be the winner. Where this method was said to have been envisioned first in the 15th century, it was rejected as an idea for electing the next Pope, but it is specifically named after Jean-Charles de Borda, who we mentioned once before when we were talking about the metric system as one of France's leading minds, where he put it together to organize a fair way to elect members to the French Academy of Sciences until it was struck down by Napoleon in the year 1800, where this system does leave the door open for more options for things that people might be a little bit happier with overall, but can result in some tactical voting to try and sink options that people really don't like, and lead to a winner that nobody would have picked head-to-head, -head, and that wouldn't have had a chance to get the majority from a different system. So if we want to think back in terms of that trip vote, that trip preference table, what we can do is score that, where we would take the 14 votes that had Paris, Rome, St. Petersburg, and Tallinn in that order, and give them out where, because there are four options, Tallinn would get 14 points from that for being last on those 14 ballots, St. Petersburg being the third choice, second from last, would get two points for each of those 14 ballots for a total of 28 points. Rome would get three each from 14 for 42, and Paris would get four each of those 14 for 56 total points. Then in the 10 ballots that had St. Petersburg followed by Rome, Tallinn, and Paris, St. Petersburg would get 40 points for, for each of the 10 ballots with that arrangement, Rome would get 30, 3 for each of the 10, Tallinn gets 20, 2 for each of the 10, and Paris just gets 10 there because all 10 of those ballots had it the least interesting option. Then for the 8 that are Tallinn, St. Petersburg, Rome, and Paris, they'd be split out similarly with 32 for Tallinn, 24 for St. Petersburg, 16 for Rome, and 8 for Paris. And then for the 4 ballots that are RTSP, that's 16 for Rome, 12 for Tallinn, 8 for St. Petersburg, 4 for Paris, and finally for the last set, that single person that really, really wants to go to Russia, you would get 4 points for St. Petersburg, 3 for Tallinn, 2 for Rome, and 1 for Paris, going through each of those categories for each of the points. And if we want to tally up the total options here, we just count off all the times that each of them appeared, all the total scores we have here, where for Paris, we had that with those 14 ballots, they all put it first, so that's 56 points, plus 30 from, excuse me, not 30, I skipped a line, 10 from the next 10, along with eight from the next group, four, and then one for a total of 79 points. Meanwhile, we would then get Rome having here 42 points plus 30 points plus 16 and another 16 and two for a total of 102 points. Excuse me, why did I say 102? That's a 106. That's very weird even for me not being able to read that. And then for St. Petersburg, which I'm just going to abbreviate SP, I'm not going to write up the whole thing because I don't have quite that much space, we would get 28 points from the first 14, 20 points 
from the second 10, 24 from the third group of eight that voted for St. Petersburg as the second best option, along with eight from the fourth group and four from that one person who really wants to go to Russia for a total of 104 points. And then finally with Palin, which I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. My knowledge of Estonian is very limited, and I would hope not to insult them, not least because they have very good internet and stand a decent chance of hearing about this. But for this, we end up with 14 plus 20 plus 32 plus 12 plus 3 for a total of 81 points. Where, in this case, because Rome has the most points, that means Rome is the winner of that election. Rome is where they would go if they used the board account method. Where, in this case, we can see that Rome was not anyone's first choice, except for that group of four near the end. Most people, I guess, aren't that excited about going to the Colosseum. But it was consistently near the top. It was one that most people were more or less okay with. You know, no one's like jumping for joy to get out there, but hey, it'd be pretty cool. Whereas looking at Paris, that one by the plurality method, maybe you've got like a dozen people who have been really obnoxious all semester about how badly they want to see the Eiffel Tower or the Arc de Triomphe. And so the rest of them said, nah, we're not going there. We're not giving them what they want. They can do that on their own time. We're sick of hearing about Paris. So they put it all at the bottom, thus guaranteeing that that one wouldn't win. This is what I mean by that tactical voting that I mentioned earlier, that they can choose to sink a candidate as a result. Or maybe they just don't feel that strongly about going to Paris and want to go for somewhere else. Point is, they can bring it to the bottom if it's what they really don't want, and that's what happened with three, excuse me, not three, four of the five different groups, even though the first one seemed pretty passionate about making it happen. And then next, we're going to talk about another option that we have here, which is not quite splitting the difference here, but it's taking that plurality method and adjusting it a little bit to remove the cases that seem like they shouldn't matter through what is called plurality with elimination. 